What builds more muscle? Heavy weights and low reps or more reps with lighter weight. If you take a look at a standard personal trainer textbook, you'll find a very structured rep range continuum stating that one to five reps build strength, six to 12 reps are good for hypertrophy, and 12 or more reps are good for muscle endurance. But is there any truth to this? Well, yes and no. For starters, there's plenty of research showing you can build muscle with both light and heavy weights using a variety of rep ranges. It doesn't have to be one or the other. In today's video, we'll go over everything you need to know about ideal rep ranges and how heavy you should train for optimal muscle growth. Before we get into specifics, let's go over the current research and see what the science says about rep ranges and the appropriate training intensity to get jacked. Let's start with a 2017 systematic review and meta-analysis by Dr. Schoenfeld. According to this review, muscle hypertrophy can be equally achieved across a spectrum of loading ranges. In other words, muscle growth is very similar regardless of rep ranges. However, there are two main caveats to this. Number one, training volume must be equated. For example, a 2014 study compared a volume equated bodybuilding program versus a powerlifting program to assess differences in muscle growth. In this study, 17 young men were randomly assigned to two groups. The bodybuilding group did three sets of their 10 rep max with 90 seconds rest, and the other group did seven sets of their three rep max with three minutes of rest in between sets. After eight weeks, both groups showed similar muscle growth. However, the powerlifting group gained more strength. These findings are expected given that strength training is more specific than hypertrophy training. In other words, to get stronger, you need to lift heavy weights, and we'll get into that later. But for now, we're talking about muscle growth. Number two, sets must be carried out with a high degree of effort. This means that no matter the rep range, your sets need to be challenging enough to stimulate muscle growth. If you're doing sets of eight, but you're leaving five or more reps in reserve, you're probably not gonna make a lot of gains. Rep ranges are not magical. You still need to put in the effort, but that leaves one question on the table, how heavy should you train? Okay, so now we know you can build muscle with a variety of rep ranges, but is there an optimal rep range for muscle growth? And if so, how much does it impact the intensity of your training sessions? A quick note for those of you who are unfamiliar with the meaning of training intensity. From an objective standpoint, intensity refers to either the intensity of the load, meaning how much you're lifting relative to your one rep max, or the intensity of effort, often defined as a rating of perceived exertion, or RPE. According to the current research, it's probably a good idea to stay within 30 to 85% of your one rep max. Anything below 30% is not gonna be very efficient for muscle growth as it will result in extremely high reps between 30 to 50 or even more, taking longer to achieve the necessary degree of effort. You wouldn't be getting a lot of effective reps that really stimulate muscle growth. On the other hand, going above 85% of your one rep max could increase the risk of injury and cause more joint and connective tissue fatigue. Not to mention that you would need to rest far longer between sets. Remember that muscle growth is similar as long as total volume is equated. Thus, if most of your sets are in the one to five rep range, you probably need to do far more sets to get the same hypertrophic stimulus, but you'd also get a lot more fatigue. Having said that, if your main goal is hypertrophy, most of your sets should be in the six to 12 rep range as this is a good mix between heavier and lighter loads and can stimulate muscle growth via different pathways such as mechanical tension and metabolite buildup. Keep in mind that these are hard sets close to muscle failure. If you wanna get the best of both worlds, you can mix heavy and lighter weights by incorporating a drop set to extend the set beyond failure and get a good muscle building stimulus. However, this will also result in more fatigue. So we recommend saving this for when you're really trying to push yourself at the end of a program or you're short on time. Additionally, some exercises such as squats, deadlifts, and rows are better suited for lower reps between five and 10 while isolation exercises and machine work are better suited for higher reps, between 10 to 20 or more reps. For example, you may be able to add a few pounds to your deadlift each week to drive progressive overload, but imagine doing the same for bicep curls. Chances are that the bicep curls would start to feel too heavy, which would then lead to form breakdown and a worse muscle building stimulus. An alternative to this would be keeping the same weight week after week and focusing on increasing the total amount of reps until you're at the very top of your designated rep range. If you're aiming for eight to 12 reps, you'd increase the weight only once you're able to complete all sets for 12 reps. Then you'd increase the weight slightly and start over from the bottom of the rep range, resetting your progression. Lastly, you could periodize your training and change rep ranges every four to six weeks, especially on exercises that feel stale or haven't been progressing as much. For example, during the first few weeks, you could start your program with heavier loads for lower reps, three to eight, followed by moderate loads with higher reps, eight to 15 and finishing with lighter loads and even higher reps, 10 to 20. Thus, when you reset the cycle, 
you would aim to beat your previous best at that specific rep range. Now you may be wondering how many sets you should dedicate to each rep range. According to the Muscle and Strength Pyramid by Dr. Eric Helms, if your main goal is hypertrophy, then 65 to 75% of your total volume should be in the six to 12 rep range. And the remaining volume should be in the one to six and 12 to 20 rep range. However, if you're more interested in building strength, then 65 to 75% of your volume should be in the one to six rep range and the remaining volume in the six to 15 rep range. This is because strength is specific to a movement and a rep range. Thus, the more time you practice lifting heavy in a specific rep range, the stronger you will become in that rep range with that specific load. In case you're wondering whether you should switch your training program to include a wider variety of rep ranges, it's important to ask yourself two questions. What is your main goal? What is your experience level? For beginners in their first one to two years of serious consistent lifting, looking to build strength and size, you probably don't need to worry about any of this. Do most of your sets in the six to 12 rep range and focus on progressive overload. For intermediate to advanced lifters, you may need to be more specific with your training to keep building muscle. If you're stuck in a plateau, you could benefit from doing a lower volume program where you focus more on building strength and then switch to a hypertrophy style program where you decrease the load and increase the reps. In doing so, your new strength gain should carry over to the new rep ranges, helping you lift more weight for more reps. You could also mix elements of strength and hypertrophy in the same program. Let's take a classic push-pull leg split as an example. Instead of always doing sets in the six to 12 rep range, you could have a day where you're doing lower volume and focusing more on heavier loads with less reps in the five to eight rep range and days where you go for lighter weights for more reps in the 10 to 20 rep range. In doing so, you can stimulate hypertrophy via multiple pathways. The heavier sets would result in more mechanical tension, the main driver of muscle growth, and the lighter loads would add an element of metabolite buildup, which would also help stimulate hypertrophy. To answer the main question of this video, what's best for muscle growth, heavy or light weights? As long as volume is equal and you're lifting with a high enough intensity, both are viable options. Don't forget that progressive overload is the main driver of muscle growth. If you're still unsure how to apply this to your own training, focus on this. Choose rep ranges that give you a good stimulus and keep progressing until you hit a plateau. If five to 10 reps feels amazing on squats, keep doing it. But if one day squats starts to cause knee pain or discomfort, try lowering the weight and increasing the rep range to 10 to 15 reps. This can help you break plateaus or work around injuries while getting a good stimulus for muscle growth. Finally, for the sake of training efficiency, fatigue management, and injury prevention, we recommend you do these things. Do most of your sets in the six to 12 rep range. Include some sets in the three to five range for compound exercises such as deadlifts, squats, and the bench press, especially if you're also looking to get stronger. Add higher rep ranges in the 15 to 20 rep range for isolation exercises such as lateral raises, face pulls, and cable flies. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if you're an intermediate or advanced lifter whose muscle gains have stalled and are looking to jumpstart new muscle growth, grab a copy of our brand new program, Mass 5 Full Body. This is a high frequency full body workout for intermediate and advanced lifters who are looking to take their physique to the next level. And right now you can get an additional 25% off by using coupon code MASS25. If you wanna learn more, click the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.